Hello, this video is about how tools can help you adhere to ISO 26262. ISO 26262 is a functional safety standard for the automotive industry. It is applicable to any software in an automotive that can affect safety if there is an issue in the software. Applications such as transmission, ECU, traction control, electric steering, blind spot detection, telematics, 360 viewing, and many more would fall under such category. LDRA can help in compliance with ISO 262 by capturing code coverage like statement, branch decision, and MCDC. Also, we provide tools for unit testing, for pass-fail functional testing, and for code review for compliance to coding standards. By complying with the standard, your company is able to meet customer requirements or be more attractive to potential customers in the automotive space. By complying to a safety standard like ISO 262, you have a more safe and effective software. This is our tool TV Manager. Here you can use one of our features to do objectives tracking for a specific functional safety standard. We have many standards that we support out of the box, but the one we want here is the ISO 26262 standard. Now I already have pulled in the ISO 26262 standard, but I'll show how that can be done. You can right click in the objectives window and do import standard. And then you can choose from the many standards that we support out of the box. Specifically, the one we want to choose is ISO 26262. And depending on your ASO level, you'll want to choose from one of these categories. Now, the one I've chosen is ASO D for the highest one, just so we can show that. This is taken directly from the functional safety standard itself. And if I expand these tables, we can see that some of these have input asset placeholders and so these are where documents would go if you have these documents and as you have these documents and start filling these placeholders up uh, you will see how compliant you are to ISO 26262 as you go through your development life cycle. As it is partially fulfilled or fully fulfilled you'll see what the percentage is as you start fulfilling those placeholders. Also in TB Manager, you can do requirements traceability. So I will go to the unit view to show how this can be done. Now you can import requirements from many requirement authoring tools. We support many out of the box. We support ones like Doors, Doors Next Gen, Polarian, JAMA, uh, System Weaver, Jira, Code Beamer, PTC Integrity. And you can also pull from documents directly as well. Uh, once you pulled in the requirements, you can go into the requirements traceability view uh, and we'll pull in all the requirements ID, uh, the heading, the, the body, all that information. And if you have the links, you can pull those in as well. I'm going to turn on highlighting here. And if I click on a on an individual requirement, we'll be able to see the traceability all the way down through the different levels. Now, I currently have it divided into three levels for the requirements. We have one, the system level requirements, two, the high level requirements, and then the th third column is the low level requirements. And then I've also pulled in the source code and already done static analysis on it so that we know what the functions and the interfaces are. So we have links from the low level requirements all the way down to the function level as well. Now through our tool you can have uh, bi-directional traceability. You can not only trace from top level down, but you could trace from the bottom up. And you can have uh, many to many relationship for the requirements, one to many, many to one, and anywhere in between. So if I click on an individual function, you can see the upstream traceability all the way to the system level requirement. And uh, if I click on a high level requirement, we'll be able to see the upstream traceability and the downstream traceability as well. It is important to have requirements traceability because it is called out by ISO 26262. Part 4, Section 7 for system design is applicable here. And also Section 6, Part 6 for specification of software safety requirement is applicable here as well. In addition, Part 6, Section 9 calls out requirements based testing, which requirements traceability will allow us to do. Later on, I will show our test management portion which is linked to the source code, allowing us to have that full traceability between requirements, 
the source code developed for those requirements, and the tests to verify that the source code does what the requirements said it should do. Here we have TB Vision. In this tool, we can do static analysis and dynamic analysis. Part 6, Section 5 of ISO 26262 calls the use of coding guidelines to use language subset and other enforcements linked to coding standards. With LDRA, you can do static analysis. We can check your code for compliance to specific coding standards to satisfy this part of ISO 26262. You can check against industry standards such as MISRA, AutoSAR, CERT, or many more. And we support both the C and C++ variations of that standard. Also, you can customize it if you have your own internal standard or a variation of an industry standard. Here I have chosen a coding standard. Uh, I've chosen here AutoSAR C++. Uh, there's many different coding standards that you can choose from, uh, but specifically I've chosen AutoSAR C++. I'll bring up the view code review and maximize this so that it's easier to, easier to see. This is organized by set, uh, source file, set being the project, and then by header files, and then the functions within that source file. Uh, and then in between them, we have the violations uh, against specific rules in the coding standard that we're checking for. So we can see specific rules that are being violated here and the specific violations here. Also, another aspect of part six of section five calls for low complexity, which can be checked during static analysis under quality review. If I right click on the set, I can go to view quality review and we will see a similar organization that we did under code review. We'll have the set, and then we'll have the source file, and then we'll have the member functions within that source file. Now the metrics are divided into three categories. We have the clarity, maintainability, and testability. If we look specifically under the maintainability and testability categories, we have the psychomatic complexity and nonce metrics, which are, which are measurements of how complex your code is. Now this measurement can occur at the function level or even at the source file level. You can also capture code coverage for a dynamic run from TB Vision. We run the execution phase and we run the software. We've done the static analysis phase so far, so I want to generate the instrumented version of the source code, build it, execute it, and then run dynamic coverage analysis. This will allow us to capture the code coverage, what kind of statement coverage you have, branch decision coverage you have, and what kind of MCDC coverage you have from a dynamic run. Now this is the execution part. This is a software that would be living in a tunnel and I'll be exercising this software by giving it some inputs. And that is the instrumented version of the program that we just ran. So now we're running through the dynamic coverage analysis phase and we'll be able to get some code coverage from that dynamic run. Now we can go to view code coverage and see the results for that. Once again, it is organized in a similar manner where it's organized by set or project, uh, your source file, and then by the member functions. Now, uh, we can see that we have an overall coverage and we have statement coverage for the whole set, branch decision, MCDC, and these are all percentages. And the success limit is currently set to 100%. So we can see anything with 100% coverage we get a green and anything that is not that we get a failed and we get a red. So if we get anything less than 100% coverage, we're not, we're getting a red. And some of these we have um, less than 100% coverage and some of these we have 100% uh, coverage. And some of them, some of these functions weren't executed at all. So they have 0% coverage. Section six, part nine calls out the need for structural coverage, calls out statement coverage, branch coverage, MCDC coverage, and depending on which ASO level you are at. For example, if you're at level D, which is the highest one, then you have to get coverage for all of them, statement, branch, and MCDC. Section six, part nine is about software unit testing. This, this leads us into the LDRA's tool, TB Run, and it is used to do unit testing or low level testing. It'll automatically generate a harness to pull in the function or functions or source files for unit testing. And then you can manually specify the input values and the expected output values. 
Now I already have a number of test case set up here. I have eight test cases. If I click on test case two we, in the variable IO view in the bottom right, we can see the different inputs and outputs. And we can see the specific variable names and what type they are. Now I've already specified uh, the input values here and the expected output values here, but that can be changed by double clicking and changing that value here. Now once this is all set up, I can go to run driver, run driver, regress the test cases and see if we get a pass or fail. In this case, uh, everything passes, so we get a pass in the regression column. And also I already do have some coverage information in the file view because all our tools are interconnected. Um, the run that we did earlier for the integration test or the system test that I ran earlier for coverage, that information is here. And now for the current coverage run, you can see it is updated once the dynamic analysis was done. Uh, and then we get the new coverage information here as well. Well, there we manually specified the test case inputs and outputs. What you can do is also use another feature from our tool called TB Extreme, which can auto generate test cases or test vectors. All I have to do is right click here and say run tabular extreme test, and then it will auto generate test cases. It'll run them, and then we'll see if we get a pass or fail for them. In this case, we get a pass, and everything runs successfully. Now we're going back to TB Manager to show the portion about the test management and how the tests can be linked to the source code and to the requirements. Now I've already created some test case identifiers here. Uh, the first one is to adhere to a coding standard, in this case MISRA C++. So this can be driven and ran uh, from TB Manager. And similar with the other test cases as well, uh, you can run the quality review from here as well, get structural coverage, uh, run the software dynamically. And also we have high level tests that we can run from here and low level tests. For example, the sequence of test cases that I created earlier can be regressed from TB Manager uh, and I could choose regress here. And these are these test cases are linked directly to the source code and the requirements. So we get that full uh, V traceability between the requirements, the test and the source code. Now, Part 6, Section 11 of ISO 26262 is about verification of software safety requirements. 1A, 1B, and 1C all refer to actually testing on the hardware, in the actual environment, and in the vehicles. So in, the embedded software has to be ran on, on the target to satisfy these. Elder area tools allow you to run the dynamic tests on the target, whether that is system testing, integration testing, or unit testing, that can all be on, done on target. For the next action, you can go to our website and get more information about these different areas. Uh, first, we have the automotive section. Uh, this You can go to the website link here and get more information about the automotive space. And then we also have uh, the Automotive Resource Center, which has information about ISO 26262, Autosar Classic, and the adaptive platforms. And then also we have a sub uh, sublink to the white papers and you can download the white papers associated with the automotive space here. If you have any questions, please contact us through ltheory.com or through these other social media platforms. Thank you.